Hello guys, this is Al from Open Source Channel. Welcome again. This is a new episode. Let's go back on track and let's talk about file management installed on Docker. Don't forget to like and share. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell icon. In the last three episodes, we talked about software for Windows. But again, guys, let's go back to what we usually do on our channel. We're going to install File Run on Docker. It's a file manager. One of the subscribers asked me how to install it. He had problems. I don't know why. He was a little bit fiddly, but he had a problem with the YAML file. So I'm going to show you how to use Portainer stack. So all you need to do is copy and paste as simple and as usual. So without any delay, guys, let's go and start it. I'm going to the dock part of the file run, as you can see here. And as you can see, there's already the version two ready to be copied and pasted in the stack on Portainer. Again, you can install this on Raspberry Pi. You can do a lot of things. Just don't forget to look at the description. There is also a GitHub page for you to check if you want to. And you can actually have a look, as you can see here now, the Docker Compose YAML file with the actual information you need to get started. So without any delay, let's, let me show you how to install it in an easy way. So I'm going to copy this, I'm going to the Portena dashboard and I'm going to the stack and I'm going to click add stack. I'm going to name it and as usual I make a mistake, I'm going to do it in a low case. File run, that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to paste the information. That's version 2 and as you can see, now again the guys, I'm not going to change this but put your username your password the name of the database and also make sure that this information is similar on this part of the actual code as well make sure it's exactly the same all right again all the information the, you know in the description below where you can find this code on the website so this is all you got to do i'm going to change of course some things here for myself i'm going to change the port uh 80 to 80 uh, maybe I'm going to do it one one one. I don't know yet. I've got to have a look first in my dashboard on the other containers, which one I am using. So that's the only thing I'm going to change really. Now let me go back here. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. If I go to my containers, you can see those ports have already been used. But I do know that AD is being used by my proxy manager, okay? So I need to change that to something that's not being used. I know 88 is being used, so I'm going to choose 8110. And make sure that you don't change the the number on the right, the 80 on the right, okay? That is important. Now, for the rest of the volume, again, I'm going to leave it as it is. As it's going to create a file run folder. Then when I finish, I'm going to delete that anyway. So, but make sure if you do it, make sure you've got the right volume for your installation of Docker, okay? That's all you got to do. And the next you got to do is just press deploy the stack. And that's it. All you got to do is wait. All right, so let's have a look here. Now, as you can see, the stack has been successfully deployed. And all we got to do, let's go back to the dashboard. I'm going to click, uh, let me close this one. Let's go to the containers and let's have a look. And as you can see on top, everything looks good. So we can actually inspect if you want to, you can see the stats or you can go to the information. I'm going to go now and we go here, the container logs and looks everything right. There is no error. So everything looks perfectly normal. It's been installed on using Debian. So pretty good. So we got an idea what's going on there. Let's click on the publish ports and that should open a new page where we can actually start the installation itself so the server requirement looks okay imagic or oh, i don't know how to actually pronounce that is not being loaded again you want to load that you want to make sure you read the uh, enable extension i uh, to enable the extension on the php again you can find more information here then you can go to the uh, command line and you can enable the extension i'm going to go next I'm going to make sure the information of the setup of the database is correct. 
you can go back and have a look db is the correct one and let's have a look here there we go here so the port is correct 3306 let me move this one here then the database uh, again the, the name are all the same your file run database username and password i'm not going to use destroy it. i'm going to do nothing because it's the first time i'm going to install it the prefix is going to be that one a d f underscore and the database is db as you can see here on the services and again it's on the host as well so that's fine exactly the same thing so all i got to do here is press next and i go to the settings of the database once the database has been set up it does take a little bit of time and as you can see everything has been done make sure you write down this information so you make sure you got this information somewhere written i'm going to use a notepad as you can see here so i got everything done i'm going to save it make sure so i don't lose it so let's go back and go press next and i'm going to log in for the first time the super user login is there all i'm going to do is just copy the password and again i'm going to get inside don't forget to change the password okay if you want to go you know live or whatever now let me say something here i mean i seen this program before i didn't want to do it because there's a lot of things that you need the premium access you got to pay for it most of the stuff are free the most important part of it for example security you don't get everything so you got to pay for example the premium the good things you can do two-factor authentication again you can add new users you can add a new role again you're limited of the amount as well but again for something small for someone you know private for example if you're a freelancer you want to start to upload and download files with your clients this will surface as you can see you need the enterprise file run version to get access to the sign up the uh, password policy and so many other things as well as you can see here as well but apart from that everything else works good you know and everything's easy to use as well anyway guys again authentication is exactly the same thing you need the enterprise uh, version i do use on cloud but again you know uh, it's up to you as i said this is one of the tutorials one of the uh, subscriber asked me to to show how to do it somehow he had problems when he um try to install it okay using yaml but again you can use the same code in portena where it makes a lot easier okay so we got the you know validation of the um, version of the, of the actual fire run you can update if you want to again as i say you got a limitation up to five at the moment so we go one use of account again you know it might surface for small company for personal use whatever the actual container, uh, if you look at the statistics, it doesn't use a lot of uh, CPU or RAM. So this is perfect. It's, again, you know, you don't need a big machine, especially if you go like me, for example, I got many containers running on the main, for example, server. But again, apart from that, guys, it's very simple to use. It's very simple to install. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to install it. File run. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time with a new tutorial. I'm going to install AA panel on a copy of Ubuntu. So again, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, share. And again, hack the actual algorithm of, of YouTube by helping this channel by liking, sharing. And again, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.